I'm tired of building this wall, Admin. Well, that's just too damn bad. So, what's it like being an admin's cameraman, dude? It's tough, man. Are you in danger? Hot weapon. I mean, sometimes he only brings water for himself. If I leave the door open, he hits me. Did you leave my door open? Daddy, chill. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the talking baklava that enjoys balaclava. Today, we're going over a very fun topic, and that is assault rifles versus battle rifles. Now, it's dangerous to go at it alone, so I brought my good friend, Mr. Blue Jean Operator here to help me answer this age-old question. Now, our first test, sorry, our first test is we're gonna shoot some cinder blocks and see what they do. So let's dive right on in. Now, it's the age-old question. The bad guy has taken cover behind your local cinder block wall, and you must dispose of him. So let's dispose of our bad guy. Well, it's safe to say that the 762 by 51 definitely disposed of my bad guy, and I punched a hole into a, another dimension. Let's go check on that cardboard piece of paper over there. This was a fresh piece of cardboard, and now it is covered in a lot of different chunks of stuff. Clearly, it did not do too well. I don't see a solid hole. Do you? No, it looks like it fragmented out, and then you also got bits of the concrete right behind it. That thing, uh, you fired three rounds at it? I did three rounds, I got a little antsy. I, I think it made through on the first round. Yeah, probably. I mean, look at the concrete. If you look at the exit wound, it's actually kind of interesting. So I'm gonna be using a Jim Fuller built AK-74, which is chambered in 545 by 39. And I'm not gonna be using just any 545, like your typical steel cased wool for Tula. I'm gonna be using a little bit of, a little, some spicy whoa, Black whoa, Hills whoa, whoa. ammo. Well, I didn't say you could use this ammo. What are you doing, man? It's the most fair thing for the test. All right, I'll allow it. All right, so. The concrete could have some black hills for as a little treat. Hornady. Ooh. Or it's Hornady. Hornady black. We'll just cut that part out. Ooh. Did that even make it through? Dude, it didn't make it through. Three rounds. Not yeah. yeah. It definitely it moved the it moved the cinder block. Here, side, let me see the camera. Like it definitely moved the cinder block. The vibrations, I think, cracked this one because I don't. Oh, actually, yeah. no, 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 I hit this one. Yeah. So, let's see how many. So that was three rounds of Hornady Black mm -hmm. that didn't make it through. Do you want to see how many rounds will, maybe? Yeah, let's give it a shot. All right. It's like, how many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop? How much Hornady Black will get to the... Oh, that, that did it. That did it on the, that, it, four rounds of Hornady Black is what it takes. It made a nice, look at that. It's got a nice little hole, like perfect. <laughs> Let's see how much it fragmented on the other side. Same thing as the 7.62, but um, it actually left a pretty intact. Uh, it kind of fragmented a little bit after it went through right there, but it maintained a lot of its mass through that one piece of cinder block. So I guess the magic number is four. Hey Nick, is Joe gonna come? Joe who? Joe mama, you son of a bitch! Since the battle rifle won this challenge, I get to finish off the cinder blocks.
I have, uh, I now understand why the other gun tubers that shoot stuff and destroy it on camera, why they do it now. It's very satisfying. Yeah. Very satisfying. I wish <sighs> we had like a white table out here and some like watermelons and stuff. Oh, dude. Yeah, that'd be dope. All right, Jomar, next challenge that makes no sense is we're going to do a little distance about, what do you say, 120 yards, it looks like. Yeah, about that. 120 yards away. Rather large steel silhouette, so kind of easy. I have, I feel like I'm going to lose this one. I'm running a red dot with the battle rifle, rough zero. And then Nick's got an LPVO, but it's a strike eagle, so it's kind of sh shitty. Uh, Nick, you're up first. We're going to shot time it, and you have to get five rounds as fast as you possibly can. Got it. Dope. All right, Nick, take her away. All right. Is now a bad time that I tell you that we have to start at standing? Uh, what? You have to start standing, but then you can go to prone. This is not fair. Oh, my God. I don't know why you got down so quick. Oh, God damn well, it. Well, I guess we could do it to where you could start out prone. Do you want to try it starting out prone? Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh. Yes. Hit. Hit. Yes. All right. Hit. That five, I thought that was five. Was it? No, five hits. Yeah, five hits. I thought you already got five hits. I was honestly, I lost track. I was kind of thinking of when I had to shoot, if I'm being <laughs> honest. That one's my bad. Well, Nick fixes his gun. Gentlemen, I know you're on the toilet. I know you're watching this, drinking your coffee, eating your beer. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm God, a God of what you enjoy, debating about topics that have pretty much already been settled. It's just there's two YouTube monkeys that desire to make YouTube videos. And this is breezy, so a big thank you to our sponsors. You see Norin Desert Institute. Firearms learning is something that is a fickle mistress. Sure, you can go at it alone, but what is it when you can get actually accredited firearms gunsmith training? Please do it. I need more of you to actually help me out with some of my bills because sometimes my guns work, sometimes they don't. And sometimes, well, actually all the time, it breaks my heart. Hey, what are you doing back there? Are you done yet? Yeah, I'm good. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so I cranked it down to one by. That way we're fair. Stand by. Get out. Oh my god. Dang, bro. Uh, you suck. Your strike eagle is fucking me up. Hit. That's one, two, three, four. Oh, uh, come on. Five. Oh you're good. God. 30, 25. Ah! You're going to crush me. You're a better shot than me. Uh, I don't think this thing is. <laughs> oh, that was the road. All right. All right, you got a shot timer, me. Stand by. Hold on. I have the safety up. Oh, come oh. on. All right. That was 1329. Yeah. Fucking nerd. With a red dot. Well, it's because it's of your strike. I, I'm, I'm out of here. So if you don't know Blue Jean Operator, he's a prior U.S. Army Ranger. He's like 6'3", and he gets big and angry. So when things like this happen, I give him his own, his own, his own space. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. Fucking Arizona motherfucking hell. Welcome to my hell, buddy. I found something pink, huh? I found the diamond. We're going to be rich, bro. We're okay. going to be fucking rich, huh? Wait, hold on. Let me see it. Oh no, this is glass, huh? All right, Jomar, our next challenge is going to be five rounds as fast as possible, as accurate as possible from relatively close distance. This is, now we did a little bit of distance, not really a lot of distance, but eh, whatever. And then now we're gonna do a little bit closer for speed and fun. All right, Nick, five rounds, top right as fast as possible. Is the shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh. I don't know if that was more. That was definitely six rounds. All right, let's try it one more time. That's all right, sorry. Okay. All right, right? Is the shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. Nice, all right, that was 226. 
Oh, didn't want to go over. 220. All right. 220. All right, let's check the grouping. Up them, up them, ammo. So that, this is your grouping right here. One, two, three, four, five. five. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. So I think you beat me on grouping. Yeah, close. And then what was your time? I said 225. I, I slowed down a little bit because I was trying to keep track of how many rounds I was firing, I'll be honest. Even just with that, you going a little bit faster, just slightly around yeah. the same speed. The grouping was way out there, just which yeah. makes sense because the recoil, <laughs> yeah. obviously. I, I was surprised. I thought I sent it over for a second with this guy, but then I saw it and I was like, oh, cool. I got it on paper. Sick. Yeah. Praise the sun. People in the comment section, they're like, dude, Em and short. I'm like, no, Nick's 6'3", all right? I'm six foot, like six foot one. You're 5'11", I'm six foot. God damn it! All right, gentlemen, so we did a quick little look at battle rifle versus assault rifle. Now, for technicality's sake, this isn't a true assault rifle, but I'm not an SOT, so I don't have full auto. But essentially, what an assault rifle definition is, is gonna be an intermediate cartridge like the 545, 556, probably technically 762 by 39. That intermediate cartridge that can shoot full auto that also has a detachable magazine. That's the definition of an assault rifle. For the sake of the video, this is not it. Big sad, but it's working with what I got. Then, of course, I have my battle Battle rifle, the FAL. This is gonna be the DSA version. Got it from my buddies over at NSWE. Good guys over there. Rocking it with some 762 by 51 ball ammo. Me personally, I was running this kit. It's a little bit of an inspiration from the Cold War era. I recently just been on this big pattern 58 webbing kit and I'm rocking a Faraday and Sons Repro FAL chest rig. My blue jean operator here, he has his pattern 83 chest rig for the AK mags and I think it works rather well. Nick, how was it running this chest rig? So the pattern 83 chest rig is one of my, still one of my favorite chest rigs. Mm. Um, it's an old design, but it still holds up great today. I like this chest rig for AK mags, but you know, this also runs AR mags great, yeah. even uh, battle rifle mags as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as long absolutely. as you put a spacer in there, this thing can run pretty much anything. You got a lot of ammo on you too. Mm. You got six mags plus, you know, Ah, a surprise. Now, when me running the Pattern 58 rigging with this setup, I essentially the thought process was, okay, I'm gonna do a chest rig with belt line kit. A little nod to the high-speed Cold War era warriors. Essentially also keeping in mind that I wanted to be able to carry kind of as much ammo as that he was carrying. With these big pouches, I have one, two, canteen pouch, and then three. So it was kind of like, okay, and then the one, two, three, four chest rig pouches. So let me do math real quick. Um, I can hold about four. FAL mags in one of these big pouches. So one, two, three, so that's 12 plus four. So 16, 16 times 20 is what? 320, 320. 16 times 20? It's 320 rounds. Now these aren't 30 round mags for the sake of YouTube, but how many, if these were actually 30 rounds, these are 29 rounders. Um, so I got six mags six on times, me currently. That's 120. No, no, one, two, three, four, Five hundred. It's 180 plus in my gun, so that's 210 rounds. Oh my bad. <laughs> right, it's a bad. combat load. Do you know I actually uh, failed algebra two in high school? Anyway, so you can kind of see the the disparity of how many mags I have to carry versus how many mags Nick would have to carry. Now the pattern 58 webbing, like I was saying, I think the gravity was kind of like, oh, this is punishing. With all, then keep in mind, not all my mags are fully loaded, but if they were, it'd be the extra suck factor. So there is that dynamic to it. Now, this is just a clear disparity. Now, it's also just another example of how different the fighting load, maybe the mission would be if you're running a 762 or a battle rifle versus a assault rifle, right? And this goes to show like uh, there's multiple different tools for multiple different occasions. Nick here, he was a prior army ranger, so he's kind of acclimated to having different mission sets. Would you not be? Typically, I, that's why I like this chest rig a lot is it kind of fits what I'm most used to. It's a more modern kind of style kit. Even though you have a more modern chest rig, I think what you have actually to your benefit is the ability to get into the prone a little bit more flat. That was the thought process I had with building this kit out is I was like, okay, I wanna have the ability to get a little bit prone easier. These big uh, front pouches on the hip area, they kind of get in the way, but at least they're not as terrible as I think they would be just because at least I'm still getting flat with the body up here. Yeah, and you also can draw ammo from your sides mm -hmm. and still maintain your like firing position in the prone. Yeah. Because when I found this, you saw it over there when I was shooting, trying to zero this thing. Um, like I had to like flip onto my back right. and then to get clear this from the berm in front of me versus you, you could have drawn that off of your side and had a better like firing position while doing a reload. Even though you want to still be behind cover, um, it's just less of a pain in the ass, I think. Right, right. You know, it's, it's one of those things where we're trying to dissect an issue that 
is kind of a little bit outside of my wheelhouse, even though it's on my YouTube channel. And that is the issue of the battle rifle and the issue of the assault rifle. It's like, I was never issued an assault rifle. Uh, I was a prior B cop, you were a prior army ranger. You, you know, you had much higher end military grade weapons than I did. I just had 16 inch carbines and or SBRs for duty use in the law enforcement setting. I would never have been issued a battle rifle to use in the civilian sector, but it's clearly interesting to see how it would have done in an urban setting. Most of us use ex almost exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, just like uh, Daniel Defense are the um, Block 2, yeah. so like a standard length M4, the uh, Mark 18, uh, we'd call them your shorties back then. You know, other than that, you know, you have your other specialty weapons like saws and your M240, you know, Bravos and stuff like that. But as far as battle rifles, you, you see, you don't see them a lot, honestly. Um, yeah. b mostly because of ammo interchangeability because you don't want to be the one guy with a battle rifle when all of your buddies are using M4s. Yeah. And you run out of ammo, or if you have to get a resupply, they always have to take into account, like, oh, let me get some 7.62 in there. And then it just makes logistics hard. A little know? bit more annoying. I could see there was this aggro power I had when running it, just seeing like how much dirt would get kicked up, how easy it was to destroy the cinder blocks. I got some power. Definitely not as fast, not as wieldy and light as, as that assault rifle is. Maybe if this was cut down a little bit more, it'd be a little bit more appealing, but yeah. You know, I'm definitely running with a, a big old Bertha of a battle rifle. I don't think the times were that far apart though. Like, I, I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm not the fastest shooter out there, right. um, but like at that close of a distance, we you still would have killed that guy. It doesn't oh, matter he'd be how very big. dead. No, yeah, with the, the grouping like that, even if it yeah. was like a little bit higher. So I don't think you could, like even this rifle right here, I would not feel uncomfortable using that to cross that, that berm over there and take that guy out. No, and you know, it, it always comes down to training and how much time you have behind the gun, just like everyone's, every, every YouTube personality will tell you, oh, get out there and train, and there's reason for that because it does matter. If I had to actually use this in a, a life-saving or a, a self-defense or whatever emergency situation, the difference that's gonna set me apart from being probably dead is actually having more time behind it, knowing the ins and outs, the manual of arms, what could go wrong, all these details. The more you know, the safer you are, essentially. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like either would you find, obviously this has mm -hmm. a slight edge in that close quarters, like getting those tight groups things and faster shots, right. but how much of it, like when you send off that first shot, you hit that guy on the first shot. You can still definitely use it if you train enough with it. Yeah. Obviously, if you don't train with that thing, it's gonna kick around like a mule, right. but you know, as long as you're a big, strapping person <laughs> i don't want to say man i don't want to get canceled it doesn't matter what he's you a, are he's a you big strapping non-binary a strapping individual you can manhandle this thing into doing your will so yeah well nick thanks for coming on the channel people can check you out at blue jean operator correct yep yeah on both instagram and on youtube gentlemen thanks for tuning into this video where we uh dive into another gun nerd topic that you probably already know about but just want your biases reaffirmed if you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel, as well as merchandise. All of these help out with supporting the channel and bringing more entertainment to you guys. So, big thank you. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you on the flip. Rock some sick merchandise like my cameraman Savio at Nomad Concepts. Wow. Heisen. Jesse! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I keep on messing it up.